Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everybody here today in the mid of the crisis, uh, the virus crisis, as we're calling it, COVID-19. Uh, everybody, uh, it seems, has had to move themselves into a different kind of venue. Uh, certainly, that's been true with Warp and Woof Radio. We certainly have had to do the same kind of thing and move ourselves into a digital universe in a way that, you know, other other folks uh have done as well. So this is our attempt to do this. Uh, we're actually using StreamYard. So shout out to the good folks there at uh, StreamYard. Thanks ever so much for creating a, uh, a platform that somebody like me who doesn't necessarily uh, use tech all that well uh, can appreciate and utilize. So uh, we're actually inaugurating uh, our very first opportunity here to do uh, radio in a different kind of way in a digital format. I'm actually in my office at the moment and my home. And so this is a whole new different uh, approach to doing this. Uh, we're thinking about doing this once a week as we have in the past, uh, interviewing folks, and then probably not only doing it live as we are now, but also capturing the video, pushing out the opportunity to have that uh, rehearsed for other people in the future. So uh, without any kind of further ado, if you're watching us, you see that there is a logo in the top right hand corner of our screen, which is the Cominius Institute logo. Cominius Institute, we cross three bridges there. One is at the college uh, where I teach at IUPUI University here in Indianapolis. And uh, the opportunities I have at the university are to share uh, not only my faith with people, but also to teach there. A great faculty at IUPUI, grateful to be there, uh, but also uh, to encourage young Christian college students who are thinking Christianly or should be about their subjects, uh, subject areas. The, th the second bridge we cross is into community, which is what we have been doing for four years with the Warp and Wolf Radio. We've got over 200 episodes, 250 guests, uh, a majority of our guests actually African-American, <clears throat> very specific uh, to our, our goal in terms of a broad community. The third bridge we cross is into culture, uh, grateful to do all kinds of different things, not the least of which is our truth and two that comes out on Tuesday mornings. And uh, that's something that uh, we do on a regular basis so that we can engage the kinds of world of, that we live in from a very distinctively Christian point of view. So. This particular broadcast is being sponsored by the Cominius Institute, and I am going to be the host of those, these interviews, Dr. Mark Eckel, uh, the president of Cominius Institute. Grateful to be with you. Uh, you can check us out at our websites, CominiusInstitute.org.com. You can also go to WarpAndWoof.org, which we have uh, maintained since about 2007. We've been on uh, the website since then, uh, about a thousand pieces of essay, sermons, podcasts, you name it, it's up there, all kinds of things that you can see there. You can also follow me and Cominius on a YouTube channel, Cominius Institute YouTube. You can also follow us there uh, on our Facebook page. I'm a member, a subscriber there. You can follow me, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, all of those sites. Uh, you can uh, you will find me there in one form or fashion or another. So our inaugural episode, we wanted to make sure that we had somebody who actually understood the tech for all of this. Uh, and so I thought it wise uh, that we begin our very first episode uh, with this particular radio show with Josh Collingwood. Josh, thanks ever so much for being here today. Yeah, no problem. So uh, as we usually do, uh, we start everybody with a bio. So uh, tell us anything and everything you'd like us to know about yourself, uh, whatever that, that might mean for you uh, personally. So over the last uh, uh, five years or so, um, as I've kind of straddled the line between, um, you know, church world and, and tech world and, you know, wondering, people, people are like, what do, what do you do, you know? Um, Actually, uh, a former lead pastor of mine told me to start introducing myself as a, uh, a pastor masquerading as a media designer. Uh, so, so that's that's, that's kind of how how I uh, how, how I present myself. Um, you know, it's kind of like uh, kind of like Batman's mask. You know, this is uh, this is my my, my clever disguise um, to uh, to kind of work in the tech world, but but really on the on the backside of things, it's all about. Um, you know, ministry and, and church work and how we can advance those kinds of things. Um, pretty much been around Indianapolis most of my life and 
a little bit of time up in northern Indiana, but mostly hanging out down here. And uh, where did you do your uh, undergrad? Uh, Indiana Wesleyan, and uh, I'm doing my graduate work in the same place. Ah, well, I, I seem to recall you as a student some time in the past, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were my uh, Old Testament survey professor at Crossroads Bible College back in the day. <laughs> back in the day when it was still there, yeah. So uh, that was some. That's actually where we first met, uh, actually. And that, and uh, tell everybody what you're working on right now in terms of education. Yeah, I'm in a, a graduate counseling program. It's a clinical mental health counseling track, and uh, it's kind of like the next next phase in ministry for me. Um, you know, working one-on-one -on -one with people, working in groups with people, and, uh, you know, we're working through issues with, with people who, you know, otherwise pr probably, you know, might not want to set foot in a church, but mm -hmm. might come to see me as a counselor as opposed to as their pastor. And I might still get to, you know, uh, make some kind of a difference in their lives in that, in that capacity. Oh, that's pretty important stuff. So at some juncture in the future, I'm assuming we'll be seeing a shingle hanging over your head. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, for those of you who aren't sure, uh, hanging out your shingle is uh, kind of a a motto for uh, psychologists, psychiatrists who uh, do that kind of work. And you know, just as a comment to that, uh, your work is huge. I mean, in our world today, uh, counseling and uh, interaction with folks about issues and and concerns and questions is a big deal. So uh, thanks for engaging that kind of work. So let's. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the aspects of your life. Uh, when I asked you to do this, uh, I sent you a questionnaire that basically said, give me three or more uh, areas of life that you'd really like to explore here on this particular show. So let's talk, first of all, about the ministry aspect of this. And you had uh, said that uh, your work had been in pastoral work, uh, as well as youth and, and worship, and now in counseling. Uh, you know, if you want to take that in one direction or another or wrap it all together, however you want to do that, tell us about what ministry means to you. Yeah, so I um, kind of, as I got toward the, the last year or so of my, of my undergrad, uh, I, I began to realize in, 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 in my internship that uh, most of the, the stuff that I, that I was gravitating toward in, in terms of, of activity, like ministry activities, doing things in the church, was really centered around teaching and um, facilitating growth. And I did a lot in, in small groups and, and stuff like that. And I remember uh, just about every Friday morning, I, I would I would meet for coffee with the the, the person that I was that I was interning under uh, that I that I was that I was learning from. And I remember one day as, as I was getting close to graduation, I, I don't remember if he had asked a question about you know as for focus areas or, or, you know, areas of em emphasis, things like that. But I remember telling him that I, I really think that, that, that teaching and, and uh, discipleship ministry and spiritual growth is going to be an area of, of emphasis for me. I really mm -hmm. see myself work, working in that moving forward. And, uh, you know, of course, then I, I graduated and went straight into youth ministry and, um, you know, definitely lots of small group uh, stuff going going on there lots of teaching opportunities and, and stuff like that um after that you know came back to indianapolis and jumped in with a church plant in beach grove and and uh spent most of my time leading worship but also got to do some small groups and and some teaching and stuff like that um and uh yeah like i said counseling is is the future um mm -hmm. you know kind of a, a an opportunity to, to really go deep on on one specific task, one, one, one specific issue, and uh, really just walk with somebody through whatever that issue is. Mm. Uh, so it's just, it's interesting to kind of see that like shift and, and, and evolve, you know, in the beginning, it was, it was mostly small groups and uh, conversational, you know, asking questions and um, that, that kind of thing. Um, at some point, it became very, very much upfront, uh, lecturing, teaching, um, I remember a, a really interesting conversation I had with a friend of mine a couple of years ago as I was making this whole transition back into the academic world and and back into into counseling where you really don't do a whole lot of talking. You know, you're really you're really just listening and summarizing and reflecting and asking them questions. Um, 
and a friend of mine who who is a discipleship pastor asked me, you know, he's like, in, in your you know personal times of devotion, you know, when when God teaches you things, does He give you a thirty minute lecture on it, or is it usually just a word or two? <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh. And so that's kind of really changed the way I, I conceptualize mm-hmm. discipleship and, and how that works in people. That's great. That's great. So uh, you had mentioned that uh, you mentioned the word worship a couple times. And by that, I'm assuming uh, you mean a large group corporate worship. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the first church that I was at, um, I immediately got recruited to help lead worship for the, for the Saturday night service. And uh, it did that pretty much the entire time I was there. And then um, for the church plant, that was, um, they, they had had somebody leave abruptly. And um, so they, you know, I was able to step into that and kind of fill that role for a little while. And uh, it, it kind of, it tends to be a, an ongoing theme, especially with church plants. Um, I tend to be drawn to those. And, and I always tend to be the, the music guy. Oh. Um, so it's just kind of where I, tend to fall into place in those kinds of situations. You had mentioned, uh, not only in our past conversations, but also in, in preparation for today, you had talked about the issue of music and um, specifically stringed instruments. And I kind of smiled when I saw that phrase. My immediate response was, oh, you know, we've got David here with us here today, and uh, he's going to be playing stringed instruments uh, for the king. Uh, Tell us what kind of instruments you play and, uh, you know, what your favorite kind of worship uh, focus is and as far as music goes. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've been playing um, guitar, um, you know, the whole family of things resembling guitars. So, you know, acoustic, electric, bass, um, mandolin. Um, I, haven't done much with the, I, I haven't done much with that. Okay. It's like. I kind of I, I kind of want one, and the reason why I want one is so that I can play um, somewhere over the rainbow. Um, and I remember there was this there was this one guy on uh, on campus when I was an undergrad, and all he would do I, I don't know if he went to class at all, but he he would wander the campus with his ukulele playing somewhere over the rainbow, and he would just like you you, you hear him coming, you know, at the oh other end of the building, you hear him coming, and all of a sudden he just wanders through and he's playing somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> And so That's great. Then, I was like, I, I need a ukulele for that one song. But, <laughs> oh, that's good. But yeah, um, mostly mostly guitar. Although I have um, recently started to branch out into um, more more keyboard related things, and I, I have this this thing. Um, this is called a seaboard, and uh, it's basically it's kind of like a it's kind of like a keyboard, but it has it's like touch sensitive and has all kinds of other different things you can do with it. Um, made famous by the movie La La Land. Oh, uh, if anybody's seen that? That's when they really took off and became popular. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, so I, I, I play with that, but mostly um, guitar and stuff like that. As far as worship, um, that's the instrument that I that that, that I use. You know, very much the uh, laid back, introspective, um, you know, finger stylist. Uh, which is interesting because I always seem to be in situations where they're like, let's get people up clapping and, you know, energetic uh, electric guitar stuff. And that's just not <laughs> who, who I am. Um, yeah. You're much more of a coffee shop kind of guy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Much, much more the laid back coffee shop kind of, which is interesting because one of the church plants that I, that I was at in the past doing music stuff was a coffee house church. Um, so that, that fit pretty well. Possibility <laughs> <laughs> for you in- yeah. So the possibility for you in the future really is magnified. I mean, you have lots of different directions to go here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite a few. That's good. Co- coffee house, you know, you could uh, you could pair yourself with a poet perhaps, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we could do some spoken word with some, some finger style stuff in the background. Yeah. Oh, look at you, man. You got all kinds of stuff going on here. It's always uh, amazing to me being around you, quite frankly, because uh, – you know so many things about so many things, and it uh, is the thing that actually brought us together. I needed somebody who was going to help with uh, technology, and specifically with our websites, uh, warpandwoof.org and Cominius Institute, and you actually built the Cominius Institute site. Uh, you maintain the Warp and Woof and have uh, 
you know, inaugurated all kinds of good stuff there. Uh, you're also uh, the person who puts together, we should tell everybody, the truth in two videos. So I create the content. I'm the content provider, but you make it all look really good, man. So just kind of uh, branch out into whatever you want to talk about in terms of tech and, um, you know, intersect it in any way that you want with what we do at Comenius. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. Um, last night I was over at, at my dad's house and uh, was showing him our, our little makeshift studio that we set up and the, uh, the, the green screen that we created. Um, that, that, that was, that, 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 that was definitely interesting. Um, and I, I was surprised, you know, I, I got, I got back here and, and plugged it in and I was like, I was like, you know, what if, um, what if that's the wrong shade of green? <laughs> you know, what, what if, what if we have major issues with this and it just doesn't work at all? I, I dropped it into Premiere and, and keyed it out and, uh, it was like, it was perfect. Great. And, uh, uh, we, just, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, that's just simply lime green, uh, poster board that you can buy at Walmart for 69 cents a piece. So what did that backdrop cost us? Six, seven bucks, I think maybe in that area. <laughs> yeah. Or you, or you could do like me and just paint your wall green, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> <for that. laughs> and in that case, I, I just give a shout out to my nephew, Ethan, who's uh, painted his wall yellow um, and uh, has all kinds of cool stuff at EthanRenault.com. And uh, just because we're talking about tech, I'll also mention my other nephew, who is uh, Luke Renault. You can find him at LukeRenault.com. And uh, Luke has over 30,000 followers on Instagram. Uh, his work is amazing stuff. So uh, both of them are really quite accomplished. And uh, it's the reason why, as again, coming back to you, Josh, that I'm drawn to somebody like you because you have so much to offer in this regard, just in terms of technical prowess. So tell us a little bit about why you became interested in this and, and what's so important to you in that regard. Well, I've always been a bit of a geek. Um, I remember, you know, I was like, like less than 10 years old. And uh, this was like, I remember like walking through like Best Buy and like all the other kids are crowded around like the Nintendo and all that stuff and they're playing games. And I'm a kid off playing with the laptop computers, <laughs> you know, uh, wanting one of those. And uh, so I've always been like really interested in, in tech things. And I remember um, once I got old enough to, to use one, um, repeatedly breaking things on our family's desktop. Um, I remember there's a, what, one time I, uh, I found the, the screen resolution settings and I was like, Ooh, I, I can make the screen look nicer than it does. You know, I can, and, and I didn't realize that the computer that I was using um, wasn't sold alongside the monitor we were using. And there was a certain point where the resolution would break the screen <laughs> and uh, we had to swap monitors out and, and uh, bring it back down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but no, I just remember doing all these experiments and, and breaking all kinds of things uh, before I learned how to fix those things. And uh, for a while, we kept our our local IT guy in business <laughs> <laughs> until you became the local IT guy. Yeah, yeah. Until I got good enough to to fix it myself, and uh, then then we stopped taking stuff to him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've always been interested in, in in that kind of thing. Actually, before. Um, the whole ministry emphasis thing took off for me. I, I thought I was going to go into like, you know, some kind of software development or some kind of computer related field. And, and I guess in a way I, I sort of did that too. Um, yeah. And kind of did it alongside of the church work. Just not, not quite the way that, that I thought, you know, it's, it's ironic. You mentioned the websites and the, the stuff that I do on the internet. Um, back in 2010, 2011 or so, I was, I was probably around 2010. Um, I was really into like desktop software and I was, mm -hmm. I was building programs just for the fun of it um, and, and just making random things to see what I could do. And a uh, guy that works for HP reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in helping him develop a website. And I remember telling him <laughs> that I didn't have any interest in the internet. Um, <laughs> but de desktop software was just a hobby for me and I, I didn't have any interest in the internet and didn't really know what I would do for that. And, of course, then two years later, uh, Liz Meyer calls and, and recruits me to Crossroads, and we start web development. Yeah. <laughs> Rest, as they say, is history. Yep. Yeah. And I was, I was like, wow, you know, I could have started two years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
we're all, you know, all of us who know you and uh, benefit from your expertise are so grateful for this. Um, you bring a management style that's really low key. I, honestly, when you talk talk about the issue of music and kind of being uh, a low key kind of player, I, I think that same thing, that same persona really comes through so nicely and how you uh, interact with uh, folks like me, you know, <laughs> you're so kind and generous, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, what an idiot for not knowing this stuff. And, you know, you really do a, a great job with people skill too. So I can see that whole counseling thing fit in as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It all just kind of blends together. It does. Yeah, it really does. And that, that really kind of uh, focuses maybe attention on the word worship, which is the total response to the total person to our Lord Jesus Christ, that everything that we do, uh, whatever our vocation or avocation, uh, those things that we do for hobbies, uh, all of that matters. And uh, it all just kind of works together because God's made you the way he's made you. Yeah. And speaking of that, that, that whole, um, you know, everything uh, blending into everything else and, you know, everything being connected and stuff like that. I, I just finished a, uh, a semester course on the, the integration of, of Christian faith and, and psychology and how that all, all fits together. And uh, I got to write an integration paper uh, in, in which I, I was able to pull some of those concepts in, you know, uh, my, my main point in the entire paper was that, you know, um, we, we, we think of things as, as, as separated, but in reality, if everything is, is created by, by God, then everything is, is sacred. Um, there's not a lot left to be secular. And, uh, it was, it was interesting to, to kind of take that, that position when it, it seems like most of my other classmates were trying to, figure out you know how can we how can we pick and choose and i was like for me it's not about i'm, I'm, not, I'm not sitting there questioning whether i'm going to use a, a a sacred intervention or, or a secular intervention with, with, with a client i'm sitting there wondering what's going to work and what's going to not work you mm -hmm. know and, and and ultimately if it works it's because it was designed to work uh, right yeah absolutely uh, that concept of uh, integration or faith learning integration synthesis um, really strikes against what scripture uh, teaches against, which is Gnosticism, where people, you know, put everything in boxes and uh, separate things out, as you well say. Uh, and so you're right. Uh, the issue of it being designed is there for a purpose and a reason. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm glad uh, for your integrationist skills as well. That's important as a as an understanding theologian slash musician slash worship leader slash technician, you know, you got it all going on there. <laughs> you know, when I, when I came back from, from Northern Indiana and uh, kind of officially started the, the tech business, uh, I had a friend, I, I think, I think I went to see a movie with a friend and uh, afterwards we were standing in the parking lot and he, I remember he, he kind of looked at me and he's like, so you, you were a pastor and now you're, you know, you're doing this, this tech thing, uh, this media thing. And you know, he's just like, what, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just going with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> I was mindful of a, of a passage out of uh, Acts chapter 13 earlier today, where I was interacting with somebody else about another question. And the text says that David, when he had served God's purpose of his generation, uh, he died. Now, I don't want to emphasize the death part, but I want to emphasize the fact that phrase that when he had served God's purpose for his generation, that's just such a phenomenal concept. Uh, so for you, for your time and place is right here. It's exactly as God designed you to be. And you know, we're just grateful for all the good work that you do. Yeah. So we should also tell everybody here at the end of our broadcast that uh, this is Josh birth, Josh's birthday today. So happy birthday to Josh, 29, right? Yep, yep, 29. Okay, now that's real 29. That's not somebody messing around not wanting to be 30, right? Right, yeah, no, it's definitely, uh, you can ask my mom. Uh, okay, she will. all right, <laughs> put the birthday down. Yeah, break out the certificate. We want to know for sure. That's yep. great. Well, happy birthday, and thank you ever so much for inaugurating this broadcast here with us. Thanks uh, for that. And uh this is uh, Josh Collingwood for everybody uh, needs to know. Uh, Josh uh, does all kinds of great stuff in terms of technological prowess. And you can find him at, tell us about your website. It's uh, astuterabbitmedia.com. 
is where I do all of the web design stuff. Um, there's, there's other websites. Um, you go to uh, music.joshcollingwood.com. You can see some music stuff. Um, that's kind of the, the, the main other one. Um, so, so yeah, there's, there's two. Great. Well, hey, if Geico can have a gecko, you can have an astute rabbit. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, because when we were coming up with that name, um, of course, we were throwing around all kinds of different tech sounding things. Um, and we settled on that one. Um, and people are like, what does a rabbit have to do with anything tech related? And, uh, and I, I looked at the first person asked me that. I, I looked at them and I, and I said, what does Apple have to do with your phone? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's been great to chat with you here today. Thanks ever so much for uh, being the first one in the booth. We're grateful. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So everybody, remember to follow us at our YouTube channel, Cominius Institute YouTube, YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook group, which is where some of you are watching us right now. You can also follow me at Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube. Next week, we're going to have another episode. These will be archived so you can catch up if you've missed something. And uh, listen, of course, to Josh and his wonderful words about counseling and the opportunity that we all will have at some point to sit under his shingle. Thanks ever so much for joining us today here at Warp and Woof Radio through the Cominius Institute Radio. We are here Thankful for the opportunity. We'll see you next time.